please rise for a brief moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, New Brighton. Today is Thursday, September 7th. Roslyn's has pos positions open for students after school. Three store clerk positions. Monday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Must be able to work three to five days a week. Must be at least 16 years old. Stock positions, rotating stock, and bringing stock up from lower level. Other duties include mopping and cleaning equipment. Monday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Must be able to work four to five days a week. Must be at least 15 years old. All Roslyn's Candy Castle employees receive a discount on all chocolate purchases. Go to the store directly to apply. Students, if you are driving to school, please make sure you have a parking permit. These are mandatory and can be purchased for $10 in the guidance office. Parking permit applications are also available in the guidance office. Juniors and seniors, this is a reminder that the SAT will take place here at our school on Saturday, October 7th. The deadline to register is September 7th. If you plan on attending af college after graduation, it is recommended that you take the SAT. We encourage you to sign up as soon as possible, as seats may fill up. If you think you may qualify for a fee waiver, please see your school counselor. Now on to sports. Today is cloudy with a 75% chance of precipitation, a high of 80 and a low of 70. Now back to the news. The us the volleyball team at their away game against Freedom tonight. Now on to the weather. Happy birthday to... Cecilia Knox, Julian Little, and Sean Riley. Lunch for today will be chicken alfredo, turkey wrap, broccoli, chicken sandwich, breaded chicken salad, and pizza. Menu subject to change. I am here to present our Safe to Say Something program, which has been adapted to address the unprecedented home restrictions due to COVID-19. Today, you will learn how to keep your friends, classmates, and family safe from hurting themselves or someone else. The Safe to Say program has three important steps. Step one, look for warning signs and threats. Step two, when you observe a warning sign or a threat, act immediately and take it seriously. And step three, say something to a trusted adult, call 911, or use the Safe to Say Something anonymous reporting system. Using these three steps, you will make a real difference in keeping your school safe and getting help for people who need it. The good news is that people often show warning signs before they hurt themselves or others. What is a warning sign? Warning signs are thoughts, feelings, actions and behaviors that show you that a friend or classmate may intend to hurt themselves or others. It is important that you don't dismiss warning signs as someone just joking around, being dramatic or seeking attention. Here are some examples of warning signs. Excessive irritability, lack of patience, quick to anger, withdrawal from friends, including on social media, thoughts of harming themselves or others. Statements or behaviors that intimidate or mock others based on real or perceived differences. Examples include differences based on race, gender, sexual orientation, religion, disability, or physical appearance. You also need to look out for threats. So what is a threat? A threat is when a person communicates that they intend to harm themselves or someone else. They might say it, write it, or post it. Here are some examples of statements that would be considered threats. Someone should blow this place up, or life isn't worth living. Or statements like, I am going to take her and her friends out. You'd, better, you'd be better off without me. They will regret they ever met me. Where are warning signs and threats found? 
on social media, online, social media, text, and through the phone. Now that you know step one, how to recognize warning signs and threats, let's learn about step two. Act immediately and take it seriously. It's important to act immediately and take it seriously when you see a warning sign or threat because all too often no one acts at all. I thought someone else would tell someone. I thought they would feel better tomorrow. They are too young to hurt themselves or others. I would say something if it was a big enough deal. If he was going to do something, why would he announce it publicly? The most important thing is that if you see warning signs and threats, you act immediately and take it seriously. It's up to you to be an upstander, not a bystander for your friends and classmates. Another reason that prevents students from acting immediately is that they fear they may be labeled a traitor or a snitch. They also may be afraid of being alienated, getting physically hurt or getting into trouble. There's a huge difference between saying something and telling on someone or snitching. When you snitch, you're looking for a reason to get someone in trouble, either to create problems for them or to get something for yourself. When you say something, you're trying to get someone help for their own safety. After we see warning signs or threats, act immediately and take it seriously. The final step is to say something to a trusted adult call 911, or use the Safe to Say Something anonymous reporting system. When you see warning signs, it's important to say something to a trusted adult. A trusted adult is someone who will listen to you and someone you can always rely on. Trusted adults have the experience and knowledge to get help. Here are several examples of trusted adults. Your trusted adults can be a lot of different people. They could be your school teacher, your school administrator, your counselor, or your coach. They could also be someone outside of school, your parent or guardian, a friend's parent, family member, or a religious leader. And it's important to know who your trusted adults are right now. This way, if you do see warning signs, you will know immediately who to go to. Also, remember that in a case of a life-threatening situation, always call 911 immediately and then say something to a trusted adult. While you are learning at home, you may not see your trusted adult as often as you used to. As a result, be sure to have your trusted adult's contact information easily available. Talking to adults or 911 about a warning sign or threat that you are seeing can sometimes feel difficult or awkward. But here is what you can do to prepare for this conversation. Gather any texts, photos, videos, or other communications that you have available to show your trusted adult or share with 911. If the conversation was spoken, then write down what you heard when you meet with a trusted adult. After you gather any evidence you may have, there are three important parts to having a conversation. First, you must be direct. You can start your conversation with a sentence like, I must talk to you about my friend Jane, or I need to report an emergency about my friend Joe. Second, you want to explain the warning signs you are seeing with a sentence like, they have threatened to hurt another student. Finally, you want to clarify what you want to see happen as a next step with a sentence like, I need your help now to get my friend help immediately. And if you have it, bring the individual's full name, address, and any social media information. To summarize, step one, be direct. Step two, explain. Step three, clarify your next steps. You just learned how to say something to a trusted adult or call 911. But what if a trusted adult is unavailable 
or you are not comfortable calling 911. Use the Safe to Say Something anonymous reporting system. You might be wondering, does that mean I have to give my personal information to a stranger? No, the Safe to Say Something anonymous reporting system is completely anonymous, so you don't have to give any information about yourself that you don't want to. The Safe to Say Something anonymous reporting system works by simply submitting your concern or issue using the app, telephone hotline, or website 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There are trained crisis counselors ready to receive and act on anything you submit to them. To use the app, download it to your phone or mobile device. Search for Safe to Say Something anonymous reporting system in either Google Play or the App Store. Next time you have your phone, remember to download the app. If you want to submit a tip on the website rather than through the app, first go to safetosaypa.org. Once there, select the Submit a Tip icon and then complete the form. If you'd prefer to submit a tip over the phone, call 1-844-SAF2-SAY or 1-844-723-2729. You will speak with a crisis counselor who will ask you a series of questions. Before this call is over, the crisis counselor will provide you with a tip number and password. This information will allow you to log in online and provide new or additional information you may have about your tip. After you've logged in online, it also allows you to exchange private messages to share any additional anonymous information. It's as easy as that. Thanks to your anonymous tip, the crisis counselor will work with the appropriate people in your school or community to act on your tip and intervene as needed. Today, you learned the three steps to the Safe to Say Something anonymous reporting system. Step one, look for warning signs and threats. Step two, act immediately and take these warning signs seriously. Step three, say something to a trusted adult, call 911, or use the Safe to Say Something anonymous reporting system. By bringing the three steps of Safe to Say Something into our day-to-day -day lives, we as students will be able to reduce violence and threats in our schools and make our schools and communities a better place to be. We have the power to make a difference in the world around us just by saying something. So why should you say something? You are the eyes and ears of your school. Why should you say something? You see and hear things others don't. Why should you say something? You can reduce violence, suicide, and threats. If you say something, you can save a life of a friend or classmate. Thank you for taking the time to learn about Safe to Say Something. Being a student means you are uniquely positioned to influence and support the community around you. Stand up for your school, your peers, and your friends, and say something. Thank you.